last week, three returning champions served up a challenge of their own. Take that basket and do it justice. But it was one costly mistake. That's what? Bro. Damn. That ended Katrina's Master Chef dream. Tonight, three amazing boxes. Three judges. Am I going to have to step into the shoes of these master chefs? Oh. The final four can see the finish line. That one's burned. This not burned. Kill me. Uh, no, don't give me problems. Give me solutions. Who will reach the semifinal? Puree is mind blowing. And who will trip up at the final hurdle? Seriously? This is Master Chef. Oh my goodness. My dream is to connect farm, food, and people via a farm-driven food truck. Welcome, guys. Come on down. You know, I came here to follow the dream of opening a gastro pub in San Diego. I'm so close. Winning MasterChef would give me the opportunity to open up Claudia's Cocina, authentic Mexican food with a Claudia twist. I have a one in four chance of making my dreams come true. Winning MasterChef, opening a restaurant called Rock Torn Rose, and calling my mom and saying I just won MasterChef. You are officially the final four of MasterChef. Tonight, you'll be cooking in teams. Win this challenge tonight, and your team will be moving on to the semifinals of MasterChef. Lose, and then you will go head to head with your teammate and face the dreaded pressure test. And one of you will have the advantage of picking those teams. The home cook that won the last challenge, <laughs> Nick Nappy. This is a big choice for me. Do I pick somebody that I know that I work really, really well with and pick to win? Or someone that I know that I can beat in a pressure test? I don't want to go to the pressure test. So I want the strongest person with me. So Nick, who's it going to be? <sighs> Claudia. Claudia. Right now, I'm looking at the winning team, Steven and I. And it doesn't matter what challenge gets thrown at us. We've got this. And all of a sudden, Gordon and Christina and Graham, they all roll out boxes, each with their own name on them. And I'm thinking, oh no, am I going to have to step into the shoes of these great master chefs? You ready to win? Mm -hmm. Each box contains ingredients that really define our style of cooking. Both teams will have just one hour to use the ingredients in one of those boxes. You're going to be making us an incredible MasterChef worthy appetizer and entree. All of these three boxes will have starring roles in tonight's challenges. But for now, there are only two boxes we need to deal with. Chefs. Christina's box is taken out of the equation. And immediately I realized that's the pressure test. Dessert, you no know, pressure test, no thanks. You guys ready to find out how you were going to pick a box? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Please take a cookie. <laughs> Woo. Blue team, please open your box. You have some of my absolute favorite ingredients on earth. Delicious duck, filet mignon, rack of lamb, fresh watercress, butternut squash, pomegranates, morel mushrooms, and live Santa Barbara spot prawns. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, red team, open up the box. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Oh, I love it. You have live Dungeness crab, wild salmon filet, Berkshire pork chops, heirloom apples, fennel, jumbo asparagus, and creme fraiche. Gentlemen, we want to be truly inspired by your food. To accomplish just that, we've decided to provide you all with a little inspiration. Oh my goodness. Inspiration comes rolling out of the restaurant into the MasterChef kitchen. Check it out, check it out. 
There's the salmon crudo. Pork satay and grainy mustard. Crab stuffed spot prawn. Salmon tartare. Different takes on rack of lamb. Truly incredible what a master chef can accomplish. This is amazing. Each and every one of these incredible dishes were created from ingredients within those boxes in front of you. Tonight, you can go a million ways. Please take your boxes to your stations. The stakes are huge. The team that wins goes straight to the semifinals. The strategy here is that Claudia and I have to stay on the same page, and we've got to come up with one menu and stick to it. 60 minutes starts now. All right. First thing, let's make our menu seafood. That's what I was thinking. We need to highlight the crab. Beautiful. Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe something like a prawn ceviche or prawn crudo. With the avocado as well. I want to get Mexican spice in the crab. Maybe I can make a parsley and cilantro herb oil. There you go. Do that. I'm thinking a duck for the entree. Yes, I like that. We have to use the morel somewhere. Yeah, yeah, okay. absolutely. So, salmon filet on top of a celery root puree. OK, perfect. Lock it up. Booyah! Red team, blue team, five minutes gone. Let's go. Prawns, cucumber. You've got garlic? Yes, I do. Gordon, in your box, what sort of screaming appetizer and entree? I'll start off with shellfish. Those Santa Barbara prawns. Then into a red meat. A filet wow. mignon, a duck if you're adventurous. Score it like this? Yeah, like a diagonal checkerboard. Graham, so is there anything in your box that the home cook should sort of be wary of? Like, what are the sort of risks in your box? I love crab, but you have one hour and yes. to spend so much time and getting point. such a little bit of meat out of it, throw it to the side. Spending way too much time on this. Hey, so Gordon Ramsay's box, what are you guys whipping up for an appetizer? We're doing a prawn ceviche. We're going to use the row. Steven's working on the pea and avocado watercress puree. The sauce on the bottom, the cucumber, the prawn on top of that. Very light appetizer. All right, good luck, guys. Thank you. 13 minutes gone, 47 minutes to go. Mike Claudia. Yes, Chef. Appetizer. What are you doing? We are making a crab broth, Chef. Crab broth. With a cilantro oil, and then we're going to put some beautiful crab in there. Whose idea was the crab broth? Um, it was, yeah, it's Nick's idea. Is it idea. in the oven? Are we roasting it? It's already in the pressure cooker, Chef. It's in the pressure cooker. Yes, already. Chef. It's already the crab's in, the pressure in there? It's not yet, Chef. I'm waiting for it to boil. I, I don't want to. I got to put them in there the right way. What, what's in there? Uh, shallots, garlic, yeah, but, bell peppers. Yeah, man, we're 15 minutes in. There's no <laughs> crab in there. I cannot even believe it. The crab is not in the pot. A semi-final spot is lingering. We are not going to have a broth. We've literally just booked our ticket home. What, what's in there? Uh, shallots, garlic. Young man, we're 15 minutes in. There's no crab in there. I cannot even believe it. The crab is not in the pot. A semi-final spot is lingering. But I needed, to, I needed to boil first. But the longer, the better, the more flavor, right? Yes. Absolutely, Chef. 38 minutes to go. Good luck. Can we take them out? Not yet. Yeah. I am nervous. The red team are doing a crab broth to start as the appetizer. But 15 minutes in, the crab wasn't even in the water. There is no chef anywhere tonight in America that will get a crab broth tasting delicious in 45 minutes. I think they're they're not happy. Listen, they're not happy with our crab broth idea. What else can we do? We could do an Italian crab cake that could easily be mixed together. Do that. Get on it. Change the direction. What do you want me to season this duck with? Salt and pepper. That's it. And then we're gonna place the duck on this flat top right here and get that skin crispy, right? Right. We can finish that duck in the oven. No, let's just do it all in the pan. <laughs> Halfway, guys. Thirty minutes remaining. Let's go. Right, Stephen, run me through. Entree, what is it? We're going to go with a crispy uh, skin duck here. We have a sauce with uh, nuts and morels and Madeira, butternut squash puree with a caramelized Brussels sprouts and some bacon in there as well. Those ducks. Yes, you're sir. You're cooking skin side down. You're rendering down the fat, but they're still raw. Yeah. OK, be careful. I have 25 minutes, chef. 25 minutes to get them cooked and rested. Cooked and rested. Yes, yes chef. Good luck. Wow. So, blue team, no one's taking control yet. Watch my Brussels sprouts in there. I can't watch. Duck is still raw. 25 minutes to go. Can they pull it yeah, off? Yeah, they got to get it done. they got to get it done. Claudia, what's going on? We're making some Italian crab cakes instead. I'm forming them right now, chef. OK, what's the entree? Hand-seared salmon over garlic tuscan kale. OK. We wanted a completely seafood menu. Good luck, OK? Thank I can't you, wait chef. to see you. Steven, what's up? Are you kidding? What do you mean, am I kidding? What does that mean? Those are going to be done in 25 minutes in the oven. Do you have a better idea? Talk to me. Don't give me problems. Give me solutions. 
How are those skins? Are those skins crisping up real good? Perfect. That one's burned. This is not burned. I don't agree what, with that this? one. I don't, that one, I don't agree with. Give me another one. Give me another one. I'll do another one. Yes, thank you. Killing me. Last six minutes. Blue team, red team, start thinking about your plating. Let's go. I think our appetizer is just a little on the green side. A little on the green side? What, do you, what does that mean? another color. All right, well, while you're thinking about it, do yeah. something. The blue team's appetizer to entree on a menu, I'm sold. I just don't know that I'm sold to Derek and Steven as teammates. It was supposed to be the pomegranate. Uh, no, 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 no. I don't think we need to do this that. This is where we're at. I'm already here. So we'll, hey, when we plate the salmon, we're going to play skin side up. No, skin side down. You want it down? Yes. Skin side down. Do we need more red on that plate? Last two minutes, guys. Let's go. Changing the way it's sitting. Can't change it while it's on yeah. the plate. Yeah. Come on, guys. Put the greens down and then the salmon on top. Beautiful. Finishing touches, please. Get that sauce. You follow me with the sauce while I plate this. Follow me with the sauce. Ten. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Good job. Well done. It's time to find out how you did. Red team, please bring up your appetizers. Everything's at stake right now. I just hope that Claudia's crab cake idea pays off and that we didn't take a risk at the wrong time. Describe the dish, please. We've made Italian crab cake chef with a roasted red pepper sauce, cilantro oil, and an avocado mousse. What's in the crab cake? There is crab, egg, scallions, parsley, salt, pepper. Look at the vibrancy of that. Beautiful. And it tastes good. It's seasoned nicely. It's crispy on the outside. And I close my eyes, I taste the crab. Is it the most luxurious crab cake? Not really. Is it Italian? Not really. But it's good. The important part is you bounce back. And you came back strong. And I'm amazed you got that done within 25 minutes. Well done for changing direction. Smart move. Thank you, chef. Thank you. I really have to saw through all of the crab meat, which is a great sign. What makes it an Italian crab cake? We had the parsley and the green scallions and then the roasted red pepper on top. It's chock full of crab. The avocado and the cilantro, it actually brings a really nice zest to the bite. I think that if you had more roasted red pepper on the plate, you would have sold me on the Italian style crab cake. But overall, really tasty appetizer. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. And uh, next up, uh, blue team appetizers. Please, let's go. I had definitely an integral part of this dish, but at the last moment, Derek decided to dress it up with some pomegranate seeds. It doesn't make any sense. It's his plating. He's going to own it. He better sell it. Right, uh, Derek, describe the dish, please. It's a spot prawn ceviche topped with a pea and avocado puree, spot prawn roe, finished with pomegranate seeds. Marinating the spot prawn, smart choice. Love that fresh vibrancy to begin the dinner with. Who cleaned the prawn? I did, Chef. Mm -hmm. mm. I've got the crunch of the cucumber, the freshness of Santa Barbara, top four. Puree's intriguing. Champagne vinegar, vibrant, delicious. Roe, amazing. But there's one ingredient in there that doesn't sit. Pomegranate seeds. Pomegranate seed. I don't want to feel like I'm going to the dentist to take out a pomegranate seed within my teeth. Was going through your mind, put the pomegranate seed in there. There's one ingredient in there that doesn't sit. The pomegranate seeds. The pomegranate seed. What the f was going through your mind, put the pomegranate seed in there? I uh, didn't think there was enough color on the plate, Chef. Yeah, but maybe a pomegranate juice, so you've got the sweetness and the sourness from it, but that obnoxious crunch of a pomegranate seems is just not necessary. So on the verge of something stunning, but it was spoiled by a pomegranate. Damn. Would you say that this was more your dish or your dish? I think one person has to... Just tell me. Yours? Yes. Yes. It's seasoned nice, as far as the acidity. I would have rather seen the cucumber cut a little smaller, and then just olive oil on the actual spot pond. It's still a great dish, but is it the dish that immediately makes me taste it and go, semi-final? Probably not. Mm -hmm. 
If I would have not used the pomegranate seeds, we would have knocked it out of the park. We could possibly be going to a pressure test. I'm sweating pomegranate seeds right now. It's now time to try the entree from the red team. Nick, Claudia, please bring it up. The plate looks beautiful, and if our entree is as good as our crab cake was, we've got this in the back. Please tell me what we have. We have a pan-seared salmon over sautéed kale, a celery root puree, the roasted red pepper sauce, and salmon roe. Roasted pepper sauce used twice? Ah, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. The same exact sauce used in both the crab cake and the salmon dish. Why on both dishes? We tasted this dish, and it needed something. We weren't going to give that to you if it wasn't complete. The same exact sauce doesn't get used anywhere else on the menu. Sorry. Why do we spend so much time doing a crispy skin fish and then flipping it over and letting it sit on a bed of wet Tuscan kale and sauce? Look at that. It's like, it's like a salmon condom. It's disgusting. Kale's delicious. Celery root sauce is great. The appetizer was great. We just wanted some more sauce. This dish, it's like taking you back down that slope now because of what is on it that we don't want. Yes, sir. Oops. Confused. What goes well with salmon in your box? Begins with F. Fennel. 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 There's another one in there that begins with A. Asparagus. Kale's way down here. Way down on the list. Who cooked the salmon? I did, chef. And what are we looking for in the middle? Medium. Medium. What's that? That's under medium. Yeah, you know that's rare. It actually tastes better than it looks. However, if I give you now 30 minutes, both of you, to go back there and cook from Graham's box again, do you think you could come up with something better than that? Absolutely. So do I. You've cooked better individually than you have as a team. This dish shows no personality. It shows confusion. I'm kicking myself in the ass right now. Can't believe we put the red pepper sauce on the plate for the crab and the salmon. I should have listened to myself and left the damn salmon skin up. Ugh, I'm worried about the outcome of this. I don't know if we did enough to beat the blue team. Blue team, can you bring your entrees up to the front? We got to shine with this entree. And all I'm thinking is we put the protein in Steven's hands, a madman. What's the dish? Crispy skin seared duck served on a bed of butternut squash puree, Brussels sprouts, and then a sauce of morel mushrooms and shallot. In terms of execution, is there anything you would have done differently? Steven took charge of the duck. And I think if there was maybe one thing we could swap, it would have been the way I would have seared the duck. The butternut squash puree is delicious. The Madeira sauce is delicious. The duck skin is a little tough to get through. The skin wasn't rendered far enough. But I think overall, this dish was definitely a really nice 50-50 marriage. Good job on this dish. Thank you. Why morels? I look at it as Derek's from the city, and I am from the country. The morels have a deep, earthy flavor that marry well with the duck. And who cleaned the morels? I did. So I've eaten two morels, and I've got sand and grit. Damn. Yeah. Duck cooked beautifully. Could have been longer, fat side down, so we could no white fat anywhere. But it's moist, it's delicious. Puree is mind-blowing. The sweetness with the gaminess of the duck, absolutely love it. I just wish we had cleaned mushrooms. Thank you. Thank you. It seems like the appetizer went to the red team, and the entree seemed to lean more towards us. I mean, at this point, it feels kind of 50-50. Across the 60 minutes, uh, both teams had some highs and some lows. However, you know, both teams bounced back, but there can only be one winning team tonight. The two home cooks who will now move in to the semi-final of MasterChef. Congratulations. Two home cooks who will now move in to the semi-final of MasterChef. Congratulations.
blue team. Yes. Derek, Stephen, head up to the balcony. Mm -hmm. It's the culinary fight of your lives. Two of you enter, one will leave. But before that battle begins, you need to put these on. Your armor. Go. I just feel bad, man. I chose Claudia for my team because she's the strongest competitor here, and she's my best friend in this competition. And now I've got to go to a pressure test with her. Only one of us is walking out of this thing. In the previous challenge, you both had to make an appetizer and an entree as a team. We are still missing the dessert. Of course, it's desserts. I don't want to get too confident right now, but the last couple things that I've baked have been great. Hopefully, I can do that again now. With these ingredients, I also put together some incredible desserts of my own. You have to be able to defeat the desserts. Wow. Nick, which of these desserts do you think is the most difficult? Oh, my god. Um, the macaroons and the Tower of Power. Claudia, which of these desserts is the most difficult? I think the pavlova for me and the three layers of cheesecake. Let me tell you which one is the most difficult. This one. Tonight, to save yourselves from elimination, you will both have to make my chocolate malted layer cake. six distinct parts of this dessert. Chocolate cake, malted milk crumbs, a chocolate malted milk soak, chocolate malt frosting, a warm malt fudge sauce, and perfectly charred marshmallows. Wow. It takes months to master this cake. I'll give you my basic recipe for it and 90 minutes. Seriously? This is Master Chef. <laughs> Head to your stations. You dodged the biggest bullet. Semifinals are right on the other side of this crazy ass cake. It's time to see if I've become Master Chef or not. Everything you've sacrificed, everything you've fought for in this kitchen is now all on the line. It's unfortunate that Nick and I are down here because I think that we're both the two best chefs in this competition. This feels like our finale. Your 90 minutes. Good luck. Starts. May the best chef win. Now. Come on, kid. Tonight, this is the hardest ever pressure test. This, for me, is the ultimate challenge of who deserves a spot in the top three. Nick and Claudia are very well-rounded bakers. They know how to make a chocolate cake and how to bake it well. I think they are both completely capable of pulling it off. I've never been under so much pressure. I don't want to go home today. I'm not ready to go back to La Mesa. I'm not ready to see my daughter yet. Even though I really would love to see her, it's just not time right now. And so I'm not going down without a fight. So this incredible cake, it's a tower of pure chemistry. But how do you teach somebody to perfect this? Yeah, when they get hired, like, what are the steps? When I teach my staff how to make a chocolate malt layer cake, we start by teaching how to make the cake itself. Okay. Start with butter, sugar, right. and paddle that around. The sponge batter right. needs to have tunneling and aeration. Yeah. That's what a cake is. It's light and fluffy. It's not dense. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 12 minutes gone, guys. You got this. Claudia, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, Chef. Consistency. It's nice and light. Yes. Aerate. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I whisked it. Uh, there was a paddle in there, but 
the paddle doesn't get all of that no. air in it. You changed so it. So I Good. changed it. <laughs> Smart. Nothing wrong yes. with that. Yes. Can you beat him? Yes, chef. Good luck. Thank you, chef. Get off, dude. I'm mixing my batter, and I realized I used my scrape bowl, my dump bowl, in my batter. I put the wrong bowl of ingredients in the mixer. I gotta start over. I'm screwed. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What happened? No, I'm done talking. Gotta do it again. Something else to do. By now, your sponges should be in the oven. I'm mixing my batter, and I realized I put the wrong bowl of ingredients in the mixer. I gotta start over. I'm screwed. Right now, I gotta stay calm. I have the ingredients that I need to make another batter. Scale it down a little bit. It's not the exact amount, but I know that if I ratio right, I think I'm gonna be okay. Cool. Thank you, God. So, Nick, how are you feeling now? I mean, you had to redo your batter. What happened? Yeah, I let the pressure get to me. I, you know, all that's on my mind is my family. So it's not even just the pressure. This is a technical Yeah, case. there's no room for interpretation. So you've got your cakes in the oven now. Yeah. You feel confident. I feel good. You're yeah. going to make it happen. I'm going to make this happen. All right. Feels good. Yeah, yeah. Focus, Claudia, focus. While those cakes are baking, they need to make the frosting. The butter has to be the right temperature, otherwise you're going to get chunks of butter. You're going to have a frosting that breaks. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. All right. From there, you have the melted chocolate milk cake, so you soak the cake with it. The charred marshmallows. Those are pretty easy, right? <laughs> Everyone's made a s'mores at home before. Oh. Ah. Oh, that one's on fire. Thirty minutes to go, guys. Ah. Claudia has been sort of doting over these mini marshmallows. Yeah. Two, one, two. She's losing a lot of time. Oh, got it. Oh, no. Nick's oven is open. He's now pulling his cakes out. Yeah, he is back in the game, big time. How, how long for your sponges, Claudia? Yeah, maybe a couple more minutes. She shouldn't have filled her molds up so full. Therefore, it's taking so much longer to cook. Nick started to assemble his. He's got his first base on there. Mm -hmm. Go cake, soak, frosting, mm -hmm. charred marshmallows, frosting, and then all over again. Wow. He's ahead of her now. Claudia needs to check on those cakes. I was going to say. She made the batter beautiful, but she overbakes the cake. Okay. She's gone. Yep, dry. Claudia. Yes, Chef. How are your cakes looking? They were looking really, really soft in the middle. Let's take a look at them. They look nice and domed. They feel good. Look at them. They're starting to stretch out. It's time, girl. Okay. The only thing that I'd say to you is make sure you have all your decor ready because you're going to be tight on time. Good luck. Use that turntable, guys. Be a culinary DJ. Come on, Claudia. Come on, come on, come on. The malted chocolate fudge is easily the hardest part really? of this cake. That glaze needs to be just warm enough to be fluid, yep. but just cold enough to want to hug the sides and the edges of that cake. Nyx is looking amazing. You're not going to have time to garnish it, Claudia. She's a lot to do. Five minutes left, guys. That looks a little thick, huh? Claudia definitely needs more heat. <gasps> Claudia, you've got to get that ganache Gotta on. Keep it on the heat. Three and a half minutes to go. I know, but it's like not even boiling. Ah, uh, get on there. 90 seconds to go. Okay, she can do this. She can do this. Good job, Nick. Yeah, buddy. Oh, God, I'm so happy with it right now. Now just start decorating. Let gravity do the work. 60 seconds to go. Oh, my God. She can do, do it. it. Claudia, come on. She can do it. Just start decorating. Marshmallows on top. Start Marshmallows decorating. On top. Come on, come on, come on. Sprinkle them on, Claudia. 20 seconds to go. Let's go, Nick. Tighten it up. 15 seconds to go. We need five seconds to walk down here, guys. The chef. Put it on the... Nick. 10, mm. five, nine. Take a breath and walk. Eight. You're fine, seven, Nick. Go. Six. Claudia, you've got to move. Five. Let's go walking, Claudia. Four, three, two, one. 
and hands in the air. Well done. Claudia, how do you feel? Disappointed. Ah! Looking at Nick's cake, then looking at mine, it is truly depressing. <laughs> I'm so worried about going home and feeling like I let my daughter and my family down. Nick. Yes, chef. How'd you feel? This whole competition has been the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <clears throat> this was the hardest thing I've ever done inside of the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> that was an extraordinary 90 minutes. Claudia, Nick, well done. Thank you, Thank chef. Thank you. Let's begin. Claudia, you definitely fell short in terms of that outside presentation, but it's the inside of the cake that doesn't lie. I assure you that the flavors are there. Your future rests on this slice of cake. Very impressive. Thank you, Chef. Let's take a bite. I mean, you almost managed to get the layers of chocolate cake lighter and fluffier than when I make it. It's almost cloud-like in a really lovely way. Visually, I think Nick has you beat, but from a flavor standpoint, it's gonna be really tough to beat. Flavor-wise, it's delicious. Got a great malt tone in there that uh, you know I, I'm a huge fan of. Gotcha. Um, the sponge cake itself, really big, yes. you know, aerated, which I think would be a good thing if everything else is in equal proportion. But clearly, things are not in proportion here. Half of my slice looks like it's crying out for the outside chocolate coating. Mm -hmm. I want darker marshmallows, and I want more fudge. The fact that you got here to the quarterfinals, kind of expected more from you. No frosting. So if you're gonna nice. put less marshmallows in, they need to be charred to high hell. You need to balance the sweetness. Yeah. Nick, let's see how you did. I have to say, visually, your cake is beautiful. Thank you. My one concern for you is definitely height. Yeah. Because Claudia's cake is quite tall. Right. making your cake seem much shorter. Yeah, so when I had to do my second batter, I didn't have enough to make the full, so I had smaller cakes. You shortened the recipe slightly. Uh, yeah, I had to, because I only had the okay. ingredients that I had left. Let's slice in. So, Nick, this slice of cake could be your ticket to the semifinals. Very beautiful. Thank you, baby Jesus. You did a really nice job at finishing this cake. Thank you. about the taste of the cake, right? 100%. There's something in that cake that's not quite right. It feels expensive. 
Wow. Nick, inside it looks beautiful. Thank you. Frosting delicious. The fudge really beautifully done. But it's very sweet. Why is that so sweet, Nick? I have no idea, Chef. Because I, you know what? It's because I messed with the uh, recipe. Tried to scale it back, but our ratios must have been off. We scaled down the recipe. Yes, sir. Why? I didn't have enough ingredients to do the full. It's a competition. Um... What do you mean it's a competition? If Nick Nappy had asked you for ingredients, an egg, flour, butter, would you have given him? Yes, chef, I would have. Why didn't you ask for ingredients? <clears throat> I, uh... I have fought by myself. And I didn't think to ask for help. That's gallant, that's brave, that's tenacious. But somebody's going home tonight. <clears throat> Thank you, Nick. Damn it, man. This was the hardest pressure test I've ever been in. I'm hoping that the presentation and the other flavors are going to carry me through. So we've got two fundamental flaws. I mean, Claudia's sponge is delicious. But it was way too light. Not enough frosting on the outside. Needs more frosting. But right. visually, it was nowhere no. close no, no, no. to Nick's presentation. Yeah. Unfinished. Proud of you. You too, Ed. Nick's looked incredible. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. His frosting was good. His mm -hmm. glaze was it's... delicious. But when you change the ratios in a recipe... You have to be like a mathematician uh, to the gram. Right. But the big question is, tonight, Christina, who got closest to what you presented? I hated the fact that I was going against you. For the record, if I was going to lose to anyone, I'd rather lose to you. It'd be an honor to lose to you if I have to. We all agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Claudia, Nick, tonight's pressure test was unlike anything we've ever given, witnessed. But the reason the bar was set so high is because it's about how good you've become. Whatever the results, you guys did an amazing job. I'm not going to be happy with any decision today. When you grow to respect someone to the level that Nick and I have grown to respect each other, you realize that there is nothing in the world that could make it OK to see someone else lose that opportunity. Good luck. You too. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to hear this verdict. Christina, who's going through to the semifinal? person going through is Claudia. the most visually beautiful cake. But baking is a science, and you just can't mess with those ratios. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not sad. I took a risk. Come here. <laughs> I'm not going back to where I was before, because of you three. I can't explain or thank you enough. The next chapter in Nick's life, where are we going? Going back to San Diego. I'm jumping in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start working on getting that gastro pub up. Follow that tree. If there's anything I can do, I'm there to help. Thank you. Let's get that right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Come on, say goodbye, bud. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You did an amazing job tonight. Thank you. Who's that? Three left. One of them's going to become America's Next Master Chef. Who's it going to be? None of those idiots. It's going to be, uh, <laughs> you know what? <sighs> Claudia reminds me of someone that I uh, cherished, my mom. Uh -huh. She's a fighter. So I think Claudia. <clears throat> Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
It's bittersweet being eliminated. Top four was a huge accomplishment for me. Top three would have been better, and the winner would have been great. But I feel good, man. I feel really good. I accomplished a lot, a lot more than I thought I would. I quit my job as a restaurant supply salesman. Here we go. To follow my dream. Let's keep them rolling, guys. You're doing well. And my biggest fear oh, has always been, uh, am I good enough? Tonight's winning dish was made by Nick. You. But Gordon and Graham and Christina, they made me push myself. Incredible. Thank you. They made me believe in myself. And it's a cool feeling, man. It's good. How good? Really, really good. How good? That's real good. Well done. Thank you. Seriously. Today, I feel like a new man that took on a risk Woo! and made something of himself. Good on, Nick. Next week, it's the two hour Master Chef finale as the three best home cooks in the country face the most daunting challenge of the season. These 30 industry leaders are your judges. Oh my God. It starts with an epic culinary battle. This is it. For a spot in the final two. He's pulling together stuff that I've never really tasted. But in the end, only one will be crowned master chef. And it all happens right here next week. One potato, two potato.